friend. I think we're live now, but it takes a second okay. to actually tell me that we are. But we probably are. It says we are on my end. Perfect. Yeah, it says it on my end too. It's so funny that it, but it doesn't like show it. There we go. Cool. So we definitely are now. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, hello, hello, everyone. And thank you, Melissa, so much for taking the time to come do this Facebook Live. You have such an incredible story. I'm so excited to, to talk to you and learn more um, about why you shouldn't wait to live your dreams and travel. Such an important message. Uh, so just to start, can you mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, well, as you said, my name is Melissa, and I travel full time in my RV with my husband and two cats. We just started out on our third year of traveling in our RV, and lucky for us, we sometimes park it in a friend's driveway and hop in a plane and go overseas and get to go to other places as well. Oh, I love that. How do your cats like the RV? I just ask as like a cat crazy person myself. Well, you know, at first they didn't love it, but they got used to it. And now I think they really like it. They really get excited when we go like out to a new place, like out in the woods or the desert and go to the door and want to go out and they want to explore. And our one cat, we call it, uh, he's putting on her makeup. She like rolls around and whatever it is and it gets all dirty. So I think they really like it. And they like all the windows and they get to see new environments. So I think they love it. Oh, that's awesome. I'm always like, oh, my cat wouldn't be into it. But then like, I literally have a painting of my cat on the wall. <laughs> Here's the thing I think your cats want to be with you. You know, and so they'll, they'll adjust. They want to be with you. So it'll work. Yeah. yeah. And there's a whole like, I feel like once to like, they see the whole big world. It's like, oh, that little up yes. inside apartment I was living in wasn't that great. <laughs> well, and they're afraid at first to be moving vehicle. But then yeah. our cats have kind of adjusted. One sits on my husband's lap and the other one sits on the floorboard, floorboard between us. Aww. So at first they kind of cried. It's an adjustment period. I've actually written about it on my, our website on how to RV with cats because we train them. They walk on a leash. Oh my God. So they have a vest and they walk on a leash. I love so. that. We've tried that. It hasn't worked yet, but we haven't like, I'm sure if we've really invested the time, we've tried a few times and he does the like dead weight sort of like. Yes. But they like a fainting goat, but they yeah. kind of follow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we haven't had that much luck, but. <laughs> uh, um, so, you know, while many people love travel, especially everyone in this yes. community, we all get into it for different reasons. So for you, it was a cancer diagnosis that pushed you to book a trip. Can you share yes. more about that experience? Yes. Um, actually, my, when I met my husband, we traveled together across the United States, visiting national parks. Well, he wasn't my husband I went, when I met him, but you know. Um, <laughs> but um, I ended up getting a leukemia diagnosis about four years ago. And when I was sick, recovering from chemo on my couch. I spent a lot of time on my couch. I was like, what do I wanna do with the rest of my life? And I kind of looked around. Um, I was the executive director of a nonprofit. So I kind of had a stressful job that required me to work a lot of hours. And I kind of looked around, I was like, what am I doing that for? And it kind of occurred to me that I was doing all that partly so that I could give back to the community, but really to pay for a house and pay for my cars and pay for all this stuff. And I thought, well, if I didn't have to pay for all this stuff, we could travel. So that's when I kind of had this light, like maybe we could really travel more. You know, I had a lot of dreams, you know, I was making my bucket list, but really travel was the one. And it was like, how can we afford to do that? And I was like, I really didn't want to go back to working, you know, 60 hours a week anymore, just waiting for my, you know, three weeks of vacation or whatever. And so I uh, convinced my husband that we should quit our careers. We rented our house. I was too afraid to sell it. Um, rented our house. We sold our cars. We bought an RV. We paid cash. We saved for two years and we paid cash for an RV. And now we've been in the RV two years. Um, so it's like a four year journey. Two years of kind of planning and saving and two years of being in the RV. Um, and it's been great. And I don't regret it it at all it's almost like I think what you figured it out before I did that you don't have to live a traditional life but you know it took me a while to figure that out uh, I wish it didn't take cancer to do that but I think now I'm trying to inspire people that you don't don't be me don't wait until cancer you know you whatever your dream is it, I feel like in a way 
maybe this will sound hokey, but the universe or the world is out there waiting to make your dream happen. If you believe in it and you work hard and go for it, I feel like it'll work out. And it has so far. There's setbacks and there's roadblocks. But I think if you're on the path towards, I don't know, your happiness, your dream, whatever you want to call it, it seems to work out. The world is waiting for you. That's kind of what I found out. I mean, we don't have retirement. We don't have regular jobs. But somehow, you know, there's hiccups, but it just works out. So you yeah. can do it too. Yeah, you figure it out. I always say, yeah. like, honestly, it doesn't sound hokey because every morning I do like the whole, I spend so much time visualizing what thing, what I want and how I'll get there and what it'll look like. And I really do also believe that if you can see it, like if, if it's not just like, oh yeah, I would want to maybe do that. If you're like, no, I really want this. It can, yeah. you know, it'll happen. If you can really picture it and then, you know, plan like how would you'll make it happen. Yes, plan how could it not. Yeah. yeah, but you have to the be willing to important. like make the, the jump. Yeah. Yes. And I love the way you put it too, because I mean, I'm sure it wasn't as simple, but, um, you know, I feel like for a lot of people that just wouldn't even be fathomable to give up the stuff that like is normal and that everyone seems to have, you know, the car and the house and, yes. and that kind of thing. Um, so I feel like the way you sort of put it of like, oh, if we didn't have the stuff, we could go. It's just, it made it sound so like doable and- yeah. And it's hard. I mean, you know, I come from, I had a 20 year career managing nonprofits and that was who I was. I felt that was my persona. And so there was a lot of, well, who am I going to be mm-hmm. and what am I doing? You know, if I'm not giving back and I'm just traveling around the world, what is really my purpose? And so that was kind of a struggle to, you know, that's where the selfishness comes kind of, I felt selfish to just give up. You know, I'd always, always felt ever since I graduated from college, my role was to give back and to give back to the community or try to do better in some way. And I did that through nonprofit work. So I did struggle. So I can really see how people who have a career in something else, how it'd be, you know, it was easier for me because I had the cancer, as sad as that is. But I mean, like the push. I be, push. yeah, how it'd be really hard, for, no matter what your career is, to kind of just give that up because I think we find our identity sometimes in our career at least I did yeah so it almost was like easier to sell the stuff than the than to like potentially give up this part of yourself yes or to give up the job here. and it wasn't about the money it was just more like well now what am I and what am I doing in a way kind of an identity crisis yeah that was probably the hardest thing do you feel like all. Just because that, like we were saying about your blog, um, do you feel like that's kind of helped you get your identity? I don't know if the word is back or restructure it just because now you're helping people through, you know, your website and sharing information and, and stories and things like that. Yeah, um, I started it all just on Facebook to share with friends and then that really kind of grew. And in this last year, um, I decided that I was really kind of feeling lost, although traveling is a lot of fun and being on the road is a lot of fun. I was lacking that sense of purpose. And so that's when I decided to really, I built the website and kind of focus on the website and sharing more information than just what I can on Facebook. Mm-hmm. And that's when I volunteered to go to TravelCon and I heard you speak there and met some people. Um, and so that kind of gave me another push. And so I've just been trying to keep writing. And as you know, it's hard sometimes when you're first starting out to keep that momentum, to keep going when you feel like no one's really reading. Mm-hmm. And so even though I have a Facebook following, it's been kind of hard to get them to the website. But building the website and kind of even learning how to build a website, all that is a whole new skill set. It is like learning a new job, I feel like. Being, oh, Yeah a blogger or a writer or whatever you want to call it is a new skill set learning how to promote and Pinterest and so it's been like going to school and learning and so that's given me that sense of purpose selfishly just to build it and learn those things and then to be able to share and get feedback sometimes on people saying well you know I just got my husband got diagnosed with cancer or I just got diagnosed with cancer and we're wanting to do this and you've what you've told us has been so helpful so it does start giving that same kind of feeling that I guess I crave as a person of I don't know what it is like I'm helping people in some way yeah that you're giving back that you're putting like your 
you know, yeah, you're doing your part. I feel like that too. Um, I mean, I guess we all do, but like those messages mean everything to me. Like when I'm like, oh, this is taking so long and this is like not going right and blah, blah, blah. And then you get that one email of like, oh, you, this thing you wrote helped me so yes. much. I'm like, okay, it's all worth it. <laughs> yes, 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 for sure. So, um, you know, for many people getting cancer would be a reason not to travel, but you know, what was going through your mind that made you land on travel as your next step? Well, I feel like I have a time clock. Um, I try not to focus and believe too much on that, but I was told that my cancer will return and it was like four to seven years. And so I'm on year three. So I felt like I had this sense of urgency to decide what I wanted the next few years to look like. Mm -hmm. And so then you start thinking about all those things like, well, someday I'm gonna. And so for me, it was, I thought I was wanting to run for office, an elected office. I thought I wanted to own a business and I wanted to travel. And so I dipped my toe into the elected office arena and was selected to participate in a program called Emerge. It um, trains Democratic women to run for office. And I did that in my state, even had um, treasurer, an election committee was about to file the paperwork. Um, and then we went out in our RV for a three months temporary time to try out the travel life. And that's when I realized that I don't really have the stamina that it takes to run for office and that I loved RVing and being out on the road. And the thought of going back and like committing, you know, if I was going to run a campaign, I wanted to do a good job at it and so give it everything that I had and I knew what that was going to take and those long hours for like 12 months with no guarantee of success and it just seemed like okay well if I only have this three or four year window do I want to put a year towards that and that's when I no I think I'll travel around in my RV so you know I let that dream go and that was another thing that was kind of hard that felt selfish like I was supposed to be doing this thing that was going to get back to Community and then to say no instead I think well, I'll just drive around and see the world and so that was another so I guess all my struggles with this pertain to I guess what I thought I wanted to do mm -hmm. and what I ended up doing and so you know I am now starting to find you know more fulfillment because of being able to share and help people and so I feel like maybe that's the path and the way that I can combine my desire to help people and, you know, travel and be in the RV. And so that's how travel won out, I guess, because the other things in a way were harder. It was harder to try to run for office or, you know, do things. It was easier to travel around in the RV in a way. And so here we are. Yay. Well, I guess you also, you know, you are also going to be, you know, you're building this blog, which is the business. So you'll get that one yes. as well as you keep yes. building and building. And the thing I found too, is <laughs> that the, you know, the more sustainable you can make your business, the more you can give back. Like, for example, I now partner with a nonprofit. This is like a personal example, um, to donate a percentage of my profits to them, which I wouldn't oh, yeah. have been able to do, you know, when I was smaller, but with the tours, I actually, so I do photo, photo tours and then I give a portion to a, um, a, a nonprofit called hundred cameras that empowers kids oh, nice. with, with cameras. So it's a good tie in. Um, but yeah, I feel like, you know, even before you're making some money, there's, there are ways to kind of get creative with your travel blog and see like partnerships and, and things like that. And yeah, I don't know. I think you're doing an amazing job of just like building a community, which is I think a good base for giving back. Cause now you have these people that are looking to you for information and it's, you know, you could give it to them and and that's a way to help them too. So I love what you're doing. <laughs> Basically, oh, okay. that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I, I definitely feel like we've create. I've created a community. Like I was recently I had the stomach flu just two days ago, and we decided to check into a hotel. And I shared, oh, you should have some travel points, so you can check into hotels for free when you're sick. And I think over a hundred people are like, oh, I hope you get better. I really feel hope you get better. Sorry, you're not feeling well. And so I really feel, even though sometimes we're out here kind of isolated, 
in our RV that we have this whole community of people. Um, we've unfortunately, um, and it happens, we're gonna be traveling around in an old RV in two years, we've broken down a couple of times. Um, and they've always kind of rallied around us. One time they ended up donating $900. We didn't even ask, they just had our PayPal from other things that they bought from us and stuff. And they gave us $900. So it's like, they, I feel like no matter what happens, we have this community of people that oh are there God. to help us. Yeah. Oh, that is so amazing. Right? And that's really powerful. I mean, you know, we're talking about like growing a blog too. Um, there are tons of people who have 100,000 Instagram followers who, who still don't have that. You know what I mean? So yeah. that's powerful. Yeah, I definitely feel like there's, a, it feels a little bit like a safety net in a way. Like yeah. I don't know what's going to happen, but if something did, I feel like I have this group of people that would catch me. Oh, oh my really gosh, nice. That. <laughs> yeah. that is really nice. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and I'm sure it's because you're, you know, you're helping them too. So it's like this beautiful relationship, even though it's online, it's like, you could still have these amazing relationships with people, which is great. Yeah. Even like we're connecting on Facebook live. There's yeah. so many technologies that technology can definitely be a burden, but it can also be really <laughs> helpful at times. Sometimes yeah. I'm like, I'm going to throw my phone out the window. <laughs> right. And then other times I'm like, Oh, I love this. I'm so glad I'm <laughs> alive in 2019 to, to do these things. Right. <laughs> um, so just building on my last question, you even went so far as to not just take a trip, but like we said, you left everything behind, you rented out your house, you paid cash for an older RV and then leaving your career along with your husband, left his career and you set out to travel with $10,000, correct? Yes. For as long as you could. Yes. So how did you decide on this specific adventure and what was that planning process like? Well, we set out for three months with the $10,000 in our RV, and we were originally going to just go up north and visit some family. Maybe a few weeks into it, about the time that I decided I didn't want to run for political office, we kind of were like, let's go for it. And so we went all the way over to the Tetons. We didn't, so we kind of left the plan, ditched the plan, went up to the Tetons and Glacier all the way back and came home for our, our wedding. So I kind of planned our wedding on the road and we came home in October to get married and we said, oh my gosh, <laughs> thank you. We kind of said, gosh, we love this, the freedom of this. We had already left our jobs, but you know, we weren't sure we were really that committed. And that's why we rented the house. We rented it temporarily to a, ironically from a couple that had just moved back from Thailand and we were on our way to Thailand for our honeymoon. So this couple from Thailand rented our house and we went to Thailand and did our honeymoon. And while we were out, we went for six weeks to Thailand and Indonesia and Cambodia. And we just said, I don't know how, but we cannot go back to the real world. So we just three months in our RV and now six weeks in Southeast Asia. And I was like, we already quit our jobs. We're gonna figure it out. So what we did is we got a job in a national park. When we had traveled in our RV, we thought, man, wouldn't it be cool like to work in the Grand Tetons or Yellowstone? That would be something cool. We, we can do that someday. So here we were three months later saying, well, maybe someday is now. So we applied for jobs at national parks and got a job at the Grand Tetons. And we spent the summer there. So we were able to kind of build back up our reserves, our money. Um, and we don't spend a lot. We were able to pay off all our bills before uh, we hit the road. I do have a student loan, but other than that, we don't have a lot of set bills, no debt. And we do what's called in the RV community boondocking, or the federal <laughs> government calls it dispersed camping, which means we go out in national forest and uh, Bureau of Land Management land, and we camp for free. So we don't pay to camp at a campground, which is we like even better because we're out in nature. So we're able to keep our expenses, monthly expenses to around $1,400 a month. Um, so we don't have to have a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And then I've learned little ways, like I do mystery shopping and we do some little side things. And my husband is a handyman. So we go home, kind of call out our friends and he gets jobs. And so we've just kind of managed to live on less uh, I think we're getting away on about $25,000 a year. 
Um, we're about to be out of money again. So we're looking at another national park for a job. Um, it's really cool to, even though you're working, it's like you're living in a national park. And you get yeah. to experience that really close in depth and really get to know the park. So it's, it's working, but not like not like the real working that I did before. It's kind of stressful and it's fun. And so we I, just kind of yeah. go until, all right, we're getting low on money. So what do we want to do? And we decided we weren't really ready to quit yet. So now we're looking for another job. Hopefully this summer we'll work in a national park and that will help us go, you know, for another year. I love um, just like that idea of like, you know, of course people have nine to five jobs um, for that, uh, what is, like a steady, you know, routine, steady right. income. But I love how you're, you're like, yeah, we just run out and then we work again. And, you know, you just find something, you just, you just make it work. You find the way to make it work. Yes. I, I think that the different, I mean, it's a little, you have to adjust how you think about money because mm -hmm. What we can go and make now is nothing like the amount of money that we made in our nine to five job. Yeah. Um, not that we were rich, but you know, I'm not talking about we're going out and getting high paid high wage jobs in the national park, but we don't, our expenses are low. So I think the key, at least for us to enjoy a life of more travel is to not have a lot of expenses. And so by being in our RV and not paying at a campground, and not really, you know, had, having had saved and not having debt, you know, we don't need that much to get by every month, you know, food and your cell phone or whatever, gas. And so we don't need that much. And so that way we can travel more. We can spend our money on travel. And I think that's the key is lowering your expenses, having some savings. And then, you know, a lot of people are lucky enough to have remote jobs that they can take mm -hmm. with them and then still make the money. But we didn't have that. I tried to make that work. But it was really hard to manage a nonprofit from the road. Yeah. So, you know, it was hard for me to transfer my skills to the road. So that's how we've kind of learned to make it work. With and the RV. Whole... Oh, go on. No, go ahead. I was going to say with the RV, I'm just thinking like the whole remote job thing. Is it hard to find good Wi-Fi enough to be able to, to fully work from the road? Or do you just like find cafes? Yeah, um, sometimes it is. Um, one time I was um, supposed to be doing an interview with somebody and we had misjudged how long it was going to take us to get out of a park. And so we were frantically like driving down the road trying to find a signal and then like found one and pulled over literally like on the side of the highway and hurry and whip computer you know to try to go so sometimes it can be a pain but we um like right now I'm in the Kmart parking lot where I knew oh we gosh. would have a good signal <laughs> so um Starbucks McDonald's you know things like that T what I tend to do is kind of clump all my work together like I'll work a whole lot for a week and then maybe not do a lot for a few weeks mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. instead of kind of spreading it out so like do a whole lot when I have internet um, and then the kind of jobs that we do, we call them, we call it go to town. So we're in town now. So we might do laundry and go buy groceries or get our pharmacy or do stuff, have internet. Um, we'll do jobs that are like inventory and merchandising and mystery shopping in big box stores to earn extra money. And so we kind of have like our in town days and then we'll go like out in the woods and hang out oh. with no internet and no you know, and just hike and do campfires and kind of do that kind of thing. So we have it's kind of like, you know, kind of in town, online internet, and then out in the woods. So it's kind of 50-50. I love that. That sounds perfect. And I feel like, you know, when you come back, you're probably way more refreshed to do work for somebody who's like, sort of like, you know, burning the midnight oil, like at their yeah. computer the whole time. Yeah. I have a tendency okay. sometimes to overwork. I'm kind of a type A, so it's kind of. Well, I think it's different too for you because you have to get the work done when you have the Wi-Fi versus like every single day. I mean, I guess, I don't know. You tell me it's a good trade-off, like the work, 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 and then you have nothing. Um, it works for me because I'm such a type A person. It's hard for me to stop. And so by being out in the woods with no internet, I have to stop. Yeah. And so that's nice. It forces me to. So I really like that. We just did a cruise in the Galapagos that, I mean, they, I knew before and we wouldn't have internet, but we didn't have internet for almost a week and it was really nice. <laughs> yes. I mean, it's a little bit hard at first because it's like, 
at least I, I'm a little bit addicted to my phone and I think internet and maybe it's because I do a lot of work on my phone so a little yeah. bit it's like you know at first and then you're like I don't even know where my phone is you know and usually you're used to having it like right beside you and it's like yeah I don't know where my phone is that's great <laughs> yeah yeah I just need to know in advance so I could plan you know anything I need to get done any you know for the tour company any tour bookings things like that I just need to make sure that's all figured out if I surprisingly just didn't have internet for a week I would be crying the whole time because I would be <laughs> I would be getting tour bookings and nobody would be showing up <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so I just need to know in advance but when I know in advance I do enjoy it <laughs> yeah it can be nice I'm curious too, because you were talking about the mystery shopping and those jobs. Is there any special websites where you find stuff like that? Or is it like a monster.com, just like a normal kind of job site? Um, I'm a crazy researcher. And so I spent a lot of time just researching and reading other people's blogs and reviews. Um, so I have actually written about it on my website because there are some scams with mystery shopping. Um, and so just no, never pay to mystery shop, basically. Oh, um, some of them make you, oh, pay for the item. scam. Don't pay to be a mystery shopper. Like the scams will say, well, for $25, we'll sign you up and you'll be a mystery shopper. No, no, no. You don't have to pay to be a mystery shopper. So I just did a lot of research. There's a lot of different companies out there. Um, and each one of them, you know, I would research and read the reviews on and decide and sign up. And then there's also a Facebook group on mystery shopping. So it's really legit. Like you'll go into a chain restaurant and you'll have this criteria that you have to look for. Like, does the person greet you and say one of these three things? Because apparently that's the company policy or you offered this or you offered that and how long did it take you? X, Y, Z. And you end up getting a free meal. We went to, for Valentine's Day, we got to go to a country club where we got appetizers, entrees and desserts paid for. Um, plus, I think I made $25, which is not a lot. But, you know, we weren't going to be able to afford to go out to eat for Valentine's Day that year because we were saving money. So it's and, a nice and especially if you're not like, it's not like when you're a blogger and you go to a restaurant and they might be hosting you. Now you have to do a million Instagram and Facebook and blah, 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 blog posts. This is just you eat and give the feedback and then Yes. maybe make a little bit of money. Oh, I would definitely do that. <laughs> yeah. You just have to pay attention to detail, like, and they'll have certain criteria. Sometimes you even have to time. So it's really good if you have a friend with you or a partner or something, because sometimes it's like, were you greeted within 30 seconds? And did your appetizer <laughs> arrive within how many minutes and seconds? Oh, wow. And, but, you know, so it's, and then sometimes if you do it a lot, you start going to restaurants and start noticing those things that you never really think of before, but, <laughs> you know, you can do it when you're traveling because once you sign up, you're like, um, they have apps and you're kind of like in the database and you put where you want to go. And so, you know, when you're traveling, you can also look up. So as we've traveled, I found um, mystery shops. I'd mainly like the restaurant because then we get to eat out for free and I get paid. But there's other things like going into stores and seeing how did they greet you, trying on something and did they come back and ask you to get help and they might reimburse you so much to buy an item oh. um, plus pay you. Now you're not getting rich, but you can make a little extra money or say you needed a new shirt anyway. You might be able to get the shirt, you know, half off because they reimbursed you some of it or, you know, whatever. So it's a nice way to make some extra money. Oh, I, I love, love that. that. Yeah. And is that uh, all over the U.S., you were saying? Yes. That's cool. And, okay, get the travelers if you they grade you so you need to pay attention to detail and um you know try to write in complete sentences and all that good stuff um they'll grade you like on a scale of one to ten and then the higher your score is with the company you know the better ranking and standing that you're in so what happens is say you're traveling somewhere else hotels mystery shop you know cruises oh, mystery shop i haven't got an airline i been offered hotels so what happens is the higher your score is then the scheduler will see and they're looking for someone who's going to do a good job then they may reach out to you and they don't post those jobs they'll reach out to you and say we have a shop at the Hilton Hyatt Marriott whatever chain you want to say do you want to go do that so it is possible you could get hotel stays and stuff out of it as well every place Mr. Shops. oh I love that yeah that is so great yes. um 
how long have you been doing the mystery shopping two years about three years i started three it before years. we hit the road um to make some extra money um kind of between my job and before we left and to just be able to eat out because we were saving money so about three years and i do it off and on you know i do it sometimes i'll do it more you know because i'm wanting more money or i'm in a place and sometimes i'll go six months and not do it once you kind of build up your reputation and have a score you're just there and it's easier for you to get the jobs as you travel mm -hmm. so a tip would be to kind of be stationary and do it and kind of get a good score before you take off yeah but those, other, those other schedulers don't know you they're just going to look at your score to decide whether they want to give you the job or not oh that's such a good tip yeah. um so you've already given us a lot of tips um because <laughs> we were talking you know before this facebook live that one interesting aspect of the trip was that you learned how to travel quite often for free and you mentioned that you actually have more money in your bank than when you left so yes. what are some of your favorite tips maybe if there's any that you haven't mentioned yet um for others that may want to do this you know the, the traveling for free or super cheap yes now remember i'm a penny pincher so my techniques will be different than some other people of course i do travel hacking which you probably talk about that, you know, earning points. I'm not sure. So I do, I earn points with credit cards. I do that. But um, I also earn hotels.com gift cards by using different apps on my phone to do a lot of silly things like roll dice or do surveys or scan products in a store. I talk about all this on my website. And I earn the hotels.com gift cards. And then if we're going somewhere that doesn't have one of the chain hotels that um, I have points with, then I can go to the hotels.com and use my gift cards to stay there. And I think it's once you stay 10 nights or nine nights, you get a night free with hotels.com anyway. So I just earned all these gift cards. And so I have the points and the gift cards that I use at hotels.com. So I never pay for a place to stay, it, you know, period. And then for flying, um, we have a lot of airline miles that we use. And as you know, you can pretty much, it's not quite free. You know, depends on, there are lots of fees that the different airlines charge, but anywhere from 50 to $100, we can fly with our airline miles. Uh, we also get uh, mistake fares. I don't know if you're aware mm -hmm. of those. We've been lucky to get some of those. Uh, we're also on I won't mention names, but uh, email list that sends me uh, low cost fares that I paid to be a part of, which has really paid off. So there's a lot of opportunities out there to find out about low cost fares and we don't want to get into the points game. Mm -hmm. um, and so sometimes we just kind of go where the deal is. Like uh, we found tickets from our little small town airport in Knoxville, Tennessee, which is where our home is. Uh, to Munich for $425. Like I can't even fly to Texas for $425. Yeah. So it's like, Munich? All right, we're going to Munich. So it's like, sometimes we just go where the deal is. Not like, you know, what is on my bucket list? It's all on my bucket list. Yeah, you know, I want to yeah. see it all. So we just kind of go where the deal is. And so if we get cheap flights for say, between the two of us, eight fifty to get there, I'm not gonna have to pay for any of our lodging. So really only have to pay for food and maybe some trains. So it's not gonna cost me that much more than if I was here, driving in my RV, eating here. Yeah. So mm -hmm. That's how maybe I think three times a year, we're going to Morocco in February and we're going to Munich in March. And I don't know after that, but we try to go at least two places a year. And it doesn't really cost us that much more like I said, using the points and getting earning the gift cards and stuff, and it does just being at home. Yeah, I love Maybe, that. Yeah, the lodging and the airfare is the most expensive. So if you can get that, then you have to eat anywhere. Oh yeah, I so. know. When I travel solo, I always I do like I look for the mistake fares. I use a lot of um like Twitter handles that I follow to find mistake fares and stuff, and um like I follow Secret Flying and the Flight Deal and a few of those. Yes. And I've gotten like really great fares. Um, but then my fiance is a teacher and he has very specific week off every year that like everyone wants. So we end up paying like, 
I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm paying $900 to go to Italy. I've literally paid like $200 for the same flight before. It like kind of like yeah. hurt, hurts me a little bit, but you know, it's, it's like, okay, the trade-off is I get to go with him and, and experience this with him. But I'm like, ah, I'm usually the same. I'm, I'll just book whatever I find a deal for. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and we've like talked if I haven't about, been, like, then I'll go. <laughs> exactly. We've talked about maybe we need to focus more specifically on places, but then a deal will come up. And I can't resist it. So yeah, no, and I think there that's we go. a great strategy. <laughs> I think that's a really smart strategy. And I think the other neat thing is like, for example, uh, I forget when I went last year, maybe I went to Latvia, which I hadn't really, I didn't know anything about it. I literally booked it. I'm like, I think I looked up, you know, is it safe? But I didn't know anything about it. No, no idea what you could do there. I just booked it because it was like 350. And um, oh. I had such an amazing time. It's not one of my favorite places, but that's because of the, this, mis- I don't think it was a mistake for, her. I think it was just like a crazy deal or something, but right. It, yeah. Sometimes you make these like amazing discoveries that you maybe wouldn't have yes. otherwise, which is pretty neat. Right. Exactly. So when, like Morocco, I wasn't, you know, hundred percent, I didn't know. And then I started researching and I was like, oh yeah, I do want to go here. Yeah. How come I didn't yeah. know already? So <laughs> yeah. And it was like the fair that like put the idea in your head. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I love that. Yeah. Um, so what were some, you know, from that, from just, you know, maybe the first part of your RV trip or just RVing in general, actually, what are some major challenges you've faced sort of getting into this lifestyle of RV traveling? I would say money, of course, is a challenge. I mean, still, you know, I'm saying I'm earning money, but, you know, it always is a concern because, um, if they say in the RV world, it's not if, it's when you break down. Mm-hmm. So we have broken down three times in two years. And so that's always a little stressful. And sometimes it's a little hard um, being in the small space with your significant other 24-7. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah. Um, he has headphones, some noise counseling headphones, and he'll sit in the back and kind of game or I'll do something else. But you know, it can be a little bit of a challenge to sometimes be in the space. And, you know, I guess as a female who likes a hot bath. Yeah, um, some bubble bath. Oh <laughs> yeah. So there are some things that I miss. You know, there's always trade-offs, I guess, in life. And so, you know, there's sometimes it's like, oh, I wish we were hungry. We could just pull over here and grab a bite to eat. But that's not in the budget. So we need to make something. Or, you know... So having, we don't, we don't always get to do what we want, I guess, like eat out or do all the things because of money. So that's kind of a challenge. Being close together all the time mm-hmm. is kind of a challenge, not having a bath. But then the trade-off is I don't have to go to a nine to five job. Yeah. My husband doesn't have to go to a nine to five job. We just left the Redwoods National Forest. We're ready to go to another national park, you know. So I'm getting to do things I wouldn't get to normally do. So I'll take those kind of challenges and trade-offs for the payoff, I guess. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's like, I would definitely, I would agree (laughs) with those too. And even, you know, if you could always find like maybe a budget-friendly spa somewhere or like a hot springs. I mean, the U.S. does have some good hot springs in the national parks. We actually found a free hot springs in Wyoming that was great, that we enjoyed. And uh, when I was recently sick and we were at the hotel, I was like, oh, a bath. So it took yeah. like an hour along, like it got cold and I just kept putting more hot water in. You know, I'm just... Like I'm going to save this. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so you've kind of talked about this, but I don't know if there's anything you want to add. Um, so we just talked about the challenges. What has been the most rewarding aspect of, you know, jumping into this whole RV lifestyle? I would say that, well, there's a lot. The first would be the sense of freedom, I guess, that I don't, I'm only obligated to myself. I'm no longer obligated to anyone else that they be anywhere or do anything or owe anybody anything. I mean, it's my time or showing up. So it's a great sense of freedom um, that I've never had before. And I, a sense of freedom because also our home is on wheels so if we don't like it here well we'll just start up the engine and go to the next place or we love it here we're going to stay here a couple of weeks and so I love that freedom to just 
not even exactly sure where we're going to be on Thanksgiving, just kind of going with the flow and having that freedom. So freedom, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's a good one. Yeah. That's why I love uh, solo travel. Like that's always my answer is like, I don't need to, I mean, a different kind of freedom, but freedom of my itinerary. Like I don't need to negotiate with people like, oh, you want to go to a museum I don't want to go yeah. to. And then you have to go on the hike that you don't want to go on so that we can hang out together. <laughs> yes. Well, that is one great thing about my husband, Wade, is that we pretty much like to do the same thing. Yeah. Uh, we both like to hike. And unfortunately, my stamina is not what it used to be, so I can't. So like the other day, he went on a hike and I took a nap. Fine by me, you yeah, know, yeah. so Relax. yes. So we can still kind of, we don't have to worry with that museum. We That's the other thing is I think one would not want to get an RV with someone if they don't like to spend lots of time together or enjoy doing the same things. Yeah. Because we don't, we like both doing the same thing. So that makes it easy. So we're not having that negotiation, which yeah. would be hard because every day would be a negotiation. Oh yeah. 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 I feel like when I travel with my fiance, we're on the same page and we're also like, cause you know, I feel like, you know, we're in a deeper relationship. So it's like, if I want to go by myself, it's not a big deal, but I've definitely traveled with people I didn't know that well, who a, not only didn't like the same things as me, but wanted to be together every second where I was yes. sort of like, uh, <laughs> I, <need Yeah>. space. <laughs> I think that's true. You gotta be okay with being apart too. Yeah. Or like, and not like sometimes, you know, he can be off all day hiking or something and that's fine. Please go. Yeah. <laughs> you know, give me a second. Oh yeah. yeah. Help yeah. Me. I think it's important. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so in terms of, you know, traveling with cancer, how do you manage that? Is there, you know, certain things do you have to make sure are in place or, or to plan out? Um, it can be a challenge, I guess. Um, I have a real, a good relationship with my doctor. And so I was my primary care doctor as well as my oncologist. And so they know what I'm doing. And what's really been great with that is if something is happening, I can call my primary care doctor and talk to the nurse. And sometimes he'll call me back and we can figure out what's going on over the phone and he'll call me in a prescription. And so I think because I am so sick and so I'm with my doctors all the time, they kind of know what's going on. And so it made it easy for me to be able to kind of transition into that. Um, I also have an oncologist in Texas. So I have a doctor in Texas and Tennessee. So it kind of covers part of the U.S. So I can kind of go wherever. I have had to uh, fly home before to see my doctor, um, leave and le just left my husband in the RV. I think, you know, the way I look at it is, okay, I just had the stomach flu for 24 hours where I was like cold chills, sweating, vomiting, all that fun stuff that we all love to have. <laughs> and it's like, okay, I was miserable in the RV and I was like, okay, so we got a hotel and I was just thinking to myself, I was like, kind of, I wanted to be home a little bit. Like when you're sick, you just want that home. I was like, well, I don't know what home is. And so that kind of, I don't know what I wanted, but I can be sick at home or I can be sick on the road. So I could, we could, I could be the person who's like, well, I'm going to get sick. This is the second, because I have a low immunity, I get pneumonia a lot or the flu a lot, or I'm sick a lot. I can be sick at home or I can be sick on the road mm -hmm. and I choose to be sick on the road so sometimes I crave a little bit of home when I'm sick but you know I just make it work and then you know the next day that was just two days ago and so here we are about to head out to another national park where I was home what would I be doing heading to the grocery store I don't know yeah so yeah. you know you know so I say don't let being sick stop you. I mean, it depends on what your sickness is, of course, you know, with what your doctor or whatever would advise. But, you know, I'm just making it work. I mean, I was in the emergency room in Canada. We just saw some doctor in California, you know, you just and every time you got to give the how many surgeries have you had, all of the medicine, you know, it's you a to like to restart part. the relationship yeah. a little bit. Yes. But, you know, trade offs. Oh, yeah. So I just go. You know, I'd rather be sick on the road than at home. I can still go until I can't go. I'm going. And I wonder too, if there's, uh, I don't know if there's like studies on this or maybe you have an opinion because you're, you're traveling, but maybe 
being in nature the way you are is healing in itself more so than maybe being in like, you know, around four walls all the time. Um, well, I definitely feel like stress uh, can contribute to a decline in health. And my job that I had was stressful. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think leaving that and like I said, kind of that freedom and not, I definitely have stress in my life as before. Um, oftentimes I'm like, why did I do this before? I mean, I'm so much happier, so much less stress. And I do think it's better for my health in that way. And I don't know how much I put into it, but you know, there's forest bathing. If you've heard or read anything about forest bathing. I've heard of it. I've had some friends do it, um, but I haven't tried it myself. So we like to, um, say you know it's better when we're out in the woods and connected to nature it's just more like being grounded to nature almost like being barefoot in nature and something about you know nature it's just so much less stressful than it's hard to be stressed in nature yeah there's not like the hustle bustle no one's running past you spill their coffee on you which like happens to me every day (laughs) someone's like just just knock me over (laughs) It's not the chaos of, of course, of New York or whatever it is, you know, your phone's ringing at your office or whatever it is. It's just so easy. All the emails. Yeah. And so I like to think that because my life is less stressful and because I'm, I feel I'm on the path that I'm supposed to be and living the life that I'm supposed to be living at this time, that it's all going to work out. And so I don't really think a lot about, I do have a little woe is me. Like I'm really tired. I am I'm really tired of being sick sometimes and wish that I had the health to do more of what I wanted to do, but I'm here. And so here we are. I just, we just keep, I just keep going. There's setbacks and you just keep moving forward. I feel like, yeah, whatever you want. I feel like you're going to, nothing's easy. At least I don't think so. Nothing yeah. comes easy for me. It does oh, yeah. Yay. So I agree. <laughs> don't be discouraged. There'll be roadblocks, but you know, you really can. You know, one of the things I would watch uh when I was sick, I would watch a lot of YouTube videos of other RVers and people are doing it. And I was like, well, if I could run a nonprofit, surely we could figure out how to get in this RV and travel around. I can do this. And so can you. I mean, it's it's like there are so many people are traveling and living a life of travel that I think if that's what you want, you can look around and find people like you or, you know, other travelers and see that it is possible. I just think people, it's a, I say, take the jump or take the leap. Yeah. Yeah. I it's love hard that. to make that leap. I would say too, like, um, or just, I, I would agree with you because I feel like, I think back to the first time I traveled solo, I think I was in my really early twenties, maybe 20. And my parents were terrified and they're like, no, you can't do that. I'm like, I didn't, there wasn't that many blogs or YouTube videos. I don't think at that point. So I didn't have that much to be like, well, all these people are doing it. But now I feel like if I was that 20 year old again, I'd be like, look at these hundreds, thousands of people who have done this trip. Um, and you can learn how to do it from them confidently, safely, the right way, save money, all these great things. Like there's so much amazing content online to just help you yes to help you take that leap that we're talking about I've never taken a solo trip so maybe that would be a leap for me yeah maybe I need I need to jump on that I've kind of learned that uh things that scare you go towards that oh yeah so if it it seems a little it makes you a little nervous and you're a little afraid then almost I'm kind of learning that's a calling sign not a stop sign that's a go sign yeah. Oh yeah. And like when you do something that scares you afterwards, you're just like, huh, it's like a growth sprint yes. or something. Yes. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> I can do it. Yes. <laughs> so you've already given like so much advice, but do you have any final words of wisdom for maybe anyone wanting to travel, but who is scared or hesitant uh, to take that leap? I would say that I think a lot of people are afraid because of money. Mm-hmm. And so I really think it's important to have a plan and a budget and save. I don't advocate, you know, just quitting your job and running out, you know, but if you can make a, if you can visualize it and make a plan and get it down and start working towards it. I believe it will happen for you. So that. just visualize it and start planning and go for it. 
I love the visualization. Mm -hmm. I'm all about the visualization. Um, yes. We actually have somebody asking, hey, Rob, um, I'm actually I have a phone and a computer. Okay. <laughs> like, look yeah. like I'm talking to my leg. Um, so being such an experienced RV traveler, if you could recommend one place to RV, where would it be? Utah. Yeah. Yes. There's tons of free camping in Utah and it's beautiful. It's if, especially if you haven't been out there to like to the desert and just, oh, it's magnificent, beautiful sunrises, sunsets, free camping. And I think there's four or five national parks in Utah. So I would go to Utah every wow. time. I'd love to go back. How long minimum would you say to stay there? You would probably say like, stay as long as you can, right? But uh, a month, a month. If you had to do what you want, you know, your way about it and go slow. I think that in our being, especially in with travel, go slow. I think we have a tendency mm -hmm. to hurry. So, you know, if you can go slow and really kind of soak it in and see all the parks and experience it, but you could probably fit it all in in a couple of weeks if you had to. Yeah, I agree with you a hundred percent on the slow travel. I remember like the first time I backpacked Europe, I spent three months there by my like a solo trip. And I think I hit like uh, 30 cities. Like I was maybe I'm probably more actually, I was like basically every day or every other day moving. Wow. I was so tired and you know, it's like, I barely visited any place really. And now like, for example, Latvia, when I went there, I was talking about that before I went for, I think a week, maybe eight days. I stayed in the capital the whole time. And I just did day trips and I was so much happier. <laughs> you know, I thought a lot about that. And I think that Part of that to be able to travel slow is a luxury of someone who has more time because I yeah. feel like before you know when I only had a few weeks like oh my god I don't know when I'm ever going to get to Italy so on five days I'm going to yes, Rome and Florence and you know here here there because you never know when you're going to get to go back but now yeah. that I travel yeah. more I guess my mindset has changed where I think I might get to go back and so I think it's kind of a shift in how you see travel, whether it's your two week vacation or if it's more part of your lifestyle that enables you to slow down. And that's one thing I appreciate is now that we can slow down. Yeah. Oh, that's a great yeah. point. Love it. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Yeah. This is great. Thank um, you. I'm going to pop all your links into the comments, but just before we sign off, maybe tell everyone where they can find you. Yes. You can Penny Pinch and Globetrotter. We're everywhere, that's where we are. Penny Pension Globe Charter, Facebook, Instagram, online. Please find us. Love to see you guys. Great. Well, thank you so thank much. You. And like I said, I'll pop all the links into uh, the comments right after we end. Okay. Thanks, Jesse. Well, have a great Bye. day. You too.